Amen, saints. Amen. It's so good to be in front of you in this Advent season. I hope you and your family are well. Um, that song is just resonating with me. The rock has never failed. Let us pray. God, we come before you understanding that you have never failed. So God, we just start out by saying we love you and we honor you and we surrender this time to you, God. We know that you've never failed even though when we failed, God. We, we want to trust you, God. So right now, as your servant, I surrender this time and I ask you to have your way. Let your word go out and not come back void, God. Let it be all of you and none of me, God. Let it be all of you and none of me. Let your word pour out and let people be filled. And we'll continue to give you all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. The rock has never failed. Saints of God, I am um, so honored to sit before you um, this never gets old to me, and I always find myself emotional um, when I flash back and I think about the goodness of God and my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life and where I've been brought from. The fact that I sit here, only me and God know how much of a glory story that is. And so I'm honored to sit and be able to serve humbly but boldly at the same time to be able to preach and teach the Word of God. Today we'll be coming out of Psalm 80, which Pastor Tanisha already powerfully read. But before we start, I want to make this connection to this season of Advent. This season of Advent, which Pastor Tanisha already said, it, it, it represents the commemoration of the arrival of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, at the same time representing the coming, the second coming. And the reason why I want to put that out front is because that is where we'll find ourselves in this in-between time. So much of 2020, we found ourselves in this in-between time, right? And this in-between time can be the challenging, most challenging times because the Bible has over thousands and thousands of, 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 of promises. But, but in the in-between time, sometimes we can lose our focus and lose our hope and we forget the promises of God. But today, I just want to use the psalm and use uh, uh, the psalmist to remind us of the promises of God that never leave us. The promise is that he would never leave us nor forsake us, and I truly believe that, and I want us to come to an understanding and a remembrance of that. This season of Advent, I love how God gave it to me. He said, son, the season of Advent represents the already, the now, and the not yet. Hallelujah. The already, the now, and the not yet. See, see our Lord and Savior already came into the world. Now we're in a place where, 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 where we're anticipating and waiting for the second coming. That's the not yet. And in, in, in Psalm 80, we see the psalmist, our brother Asaph. Now, I, I want to lift up that uh, uh, 73, Psalm 73 through 83 is wrote by Asaph, not David. And I want to introduce this brother to you a little bit because it's going to be important that we understand who he is and what he's going through. Because so many times I feel like we get into the scriptures and we forget that these are human beings going through problems just like us. But they are not anointed and appointed just like you and I, but got troubles, struggles and trials and tribulations. And they find themselves in challenges, but I think we don't connect it sometimes because we find them in the Bible and we believe that they're lifted high. But even though God has lifted them high, they still have troubles, trials, and tribulations. So I'll start with 80 and I will read verse 81 through 7. My Bible reads, please listen, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead, who led Joseph's descendants like a flock. O oh God, enthroned above the cherubims, display your radiant glory to Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Show us your mighty power. 
Come to rescue us. Turn us again to yourself. Oh God, make your face shine down upon us. Only then will we be saved. Oh Lord, God of heaven's armies, how long will you be angry with our prayers? You have fed us with sorrow and made us drink tears by the bucketful. You have made us the scorn of our neighboring nations. Our enemies treat us as jokes. Turn us again to yourself, O oh God heavens of heaven's armies. Make your face shine down upon us. Only then will we be saved. Now, before I go forward, I want to reintroduce the psalmist. Because I think it's important that we understand. In this, I was led to really do a little bit of research on this brother. Because I wanted to be able to introduce him properly. Now, I didn't even have to go far. I went to the first psalm that he wrote in 73. And I found out this brother had some struggles going through these, this season of waiting in this season of the in-between time. I read 73, and, I, and the first three verses introduced me to his struggles. Listen to what he says. Psalm 73, the first book he's introduced. It says, truly God is good to Israel, to those whose hearts are pure. But as for me, I almost lost my footing. My feet were slipping, and then I was almost gone. For I envied the proud when I saw them prosper despite their wickedness. Do you recognize what this brother is saying? He's saying, I was tripping and I was slipping, y'all. I was out here anointed. Now listen to me. This man of God was anointed by David to be the choir director in front of the ark, people of God. Now, I don't, you don't, the ark is the most holy of holy. And here is our brother telling us that he was slipping and tripping, envying the wicked. And I think it's important we could almost sit right there and preach. Because so many times we find ourselves in this place of judgment towards ourselves or towards others. When we find ourselves in these places where we fall and then we sin and we feel envious. But I want you to know, child of God, even in our times of wickedness and in our troubles, the promises of God have never failed us yet. The rock has never failed. I want to introduce you to him. Because to know him and know his trials and tribulations is to know us and know our trials and tribulations. So I want to just be encouraged. Leads me to my title of today. Positioning before the promise. Positioning. Why the title? Because what I've come to understand in this walk with God is there's always a positioning before the promise. And a lot of times there's a repositioning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because many times we take our focus off where God is. Remember, I said we are in this place of talking to the God of the already, the now, and the not yet. And when we get in that place of the now, we can sometimes lose our focus. And just like the psalmist said, lose our footing. But that's okay, child of God, because the rock has never failed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we go back to Psalms 8, here's what I want to introduce to you. As we go through these times of the in-between time, if we're going to continue to be positioned before the promise, here's something I think the psalmist is teaching us. In verse 1, he says, please listen, O shepherd of God. That's the God of the already. Listen to me. Oh, God, enthroned above the cherub cherubims. That's the God of the now. Hallelujah. To Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, show us your mighty power. Come and rescue us. Turn us again to yourself, oh, God. Make your fight face shine down upon us. Only then will we be saved. That's the God of the not yet. He's saying, do it again, God. This is where I am now. And the first thing we need to know as we walk in this in-between time is that we need to acknowledge the God 
of the already, the God of the now, and the God of the not yet. Be okay with knowing that you're in the now. And it can be a trouble and a struggle, just like our brother Asap. But you got to know you still serve the God of the not yet. Hallelujah. And once we have acknowledged, in a major way, acknowledged God, I do reckon it is powerful to recognize God in his all. All of God. Many times we just, we want God, God, do it now. God, do it now. But God is saying, do you remember what I already did? The God of the already. The God of the now and the God of the not yet. My God, it gives you power when you can remember the God of the already. It gives us hope in this season. And we need it. So we see that he first comes off introducing I know you got. Now, here's something I want to uplift. He about to have some tough conversation with God. So he makes sure as he acknowledges, God, I'm about to say, I know who you are. I know who you are, God. Now, allow me into a space where I can ask you to show me your face, God. Now, here's the part of the scripture that tripped me up. In verse four, he says, oh, Lord, God of heaven's army, how long will you be angry with our prayers? Hallelujah. Anybody like me in the psalm has got a how long cry. Any, hallelujah. Anybody got a how long cry? My God, in this season, it is okay for you to have a how long cry. God is prepared to handle all of your cries, all of your prayers. But that ain't the part that got me tripped up, y'all. As I did my study of my brother Asaph, I said, Asaph, Asaph, he been struggling. I I, I read a lot of the Psalms and I said, man, this one minute he was kind of like David. I don't know if you've read the Psalms, but it seems like that one minute is saying, God, you're glorious. And the next minute is saying, God, where are you? My enemy about to kill me. God, they took the land. God bless me for the land. One minute here, they're up and one minute they're down. Let's don't judge them because that's our same story. But I found myself in another question. He said, how long will you be angry with our prayers? All right, child of God, you're going to have to rock with me. Because I had the question. "Ah, This ain't about judgment of Asaph. This is about me reflecting on my own life. Was God really angry with their prayers? Can I invite you to actually challenge the Bible sometime in the way you read it? investigate it. Ask God to show it to you. I do all the time. Maybe it's just me, but I invite you into it. We don't get taught that a lot. But I, I said, God, I don't, I don't know. So I read and I didn't really see where God said he was angry with their prayers. What I did see is my brother Asaph struggling, going up and down. And so I came to a place where I said, I'm not sure if I really trust this judgment. Then I had to turn myself to just who I know God to be. And what I know about God is I haven't found so many times in the Bible where God was mad at people's prayers. But what I have found is where God was delaying his timing because he was preparing people while he was while people were in the waiting season, in the in-between time. Is it possible that God wasn't mad at their prayers at all, but because my brother was going through so much struggle that he came up with his own understanding? And child of God, I almost want to jump up right now because this is the struggle of the in-between time. We will make up our own understanding when God hasn't answered us just yet. Hallelujah. My God, today. And God, if we're going to make sure we navigate this season of the in-between time and get to the promises of God by being positioned or repositioned, we have to make sure we are assessing the mind battles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God today, Proverbs 4 and 23 tells us, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Avoid all perverse talk. Stay away from corrupt speech. Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out the straight path for your feet. Stay away. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. 
Keep your feet from following evil. To me, the invitation of the sidetrack and the evil is the inside and the outside job of the adversary. The self-talk that we entertain. So if we're going to stay on his path in the in-between time and make sure we stay positioned for the promises of God, we have to always be assessing the self-talk that comes from the inside and the talk that comes from the outside. I have an invitation. Uh, uh, God gave me some understanding of how our adversary shows up different ways in different seasons. Hallelujah. And God put it on my heart. Pay attention to Jesus' walk. Jesus comes fresh out the water. Hallelujah. I'm trying to introduce us to how our adversary will give us these conversations and invite us into believing things in our own way. Jesus comes fresh out the water, being baptized, Holy Spirit, baptized the Spirit, leads him into the wilderness, and here come the adversary. Now, make this point. It was at, this was at the beginning of his journey. I want to show you how the adversary shows up in different ways in different seasons. In the battle of the mind, the invitation to believe your own understanding. And here he comes for 40 days and 40 nights testing Jesus. He comes as the adversary, though. He's not hiding. He's not nothing. This is at the beginning. But we get deeper. See, he knew Jesus had a promise. He was assigned to all of our promise. And the adversary said, I've got to disrupt this child of God. That is what the adversary is doing all the time. He says, I have to disrupt them from getting to the promises of God. And I stand by you today saying, we will not be moved. The rock has never failed, my God, today. But then we see Jesus later in his walk, and he's telling the disciples, I have to leave you. And guess what? The adversary is slick now. He know he can't show up by way of just showing up. So guess what he does? Show up close by somebody who's close to him. There comes Peter. Different time, different season, different way. As we go through this season of waiting in the in-between time, we have to be in this understanding that the adversary will be in battle for our minds. We have to be cautious about the, the, the voices we entertain and the messages we take in, whether it's inside or outside. In the beginning, a lot of times the enemy will just attack you by way of you talking to you. But you got to be cautious because as you get closer to the promise, sometime it'll be the ones that's closest to you. I ain't judging the psalmist. I got my own story. I, a lot of y'all know I had a, a big time battle with alcoholism. It was the biggest battle of my life, and I remember being two years in of being with the church family, and I had these own expectations of once I step into the walls and step into this family, God will take this alcohol thing from me, right? Oh, this was my expectation, my own understanding, right? Hallelujah. But that wasn't God's plan, people of God. I want to I encourage you. And, 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 and I can admit, but what I haven't told you before is I made up my mind after giving that thing to God and falling and giving the thing to God and falling and giving the thing to God and falling and giving it to God and seeming to get worse and giving anybody know what I'm talking about. Beating myself up with guilt and shame because I couldn't overcome it. But guess what? I had failed, but the rock had never failed. And it was because I was trying to do it in my own understanding. But there came a day when I said, God, I can't handle this no more. And I repositioned myself in the promise because I went from believing that God was going to leave me with this alcoholic problem. I really told myself, people of God. And I, and I, I, made, I made way by scripture. Listen to me. Holy Jesus. This is what I told myself by my own understanding. I said... My justification was, God is going to leave me with this problem like he left Paul with the thorn. My God, today I look back and like, that was not God. But I sure could have made a point for that being God in that moment. 
leaning on my own understanding in the in-between time because God didn't show up in the time I want. So I made my own understanding, child of God. I want to encourage you to reposition yourself. So when I came to a different understanding by way of prayer, God said, get up. That is not the plan I have for you. Now take your butt into this celebrate recovery place and watch what I do. Oh, it's a glory story. And it ain't about me. It's about God. I walked into that place, y'all. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Jesus, for deliverance. And I remember the first day I said, my name is Wayne Clark. I'm a believer in God, believer in Christ. And my struggle is alcoholism, but that's not the root. I'm here to find out the root of my problem because it is it's alcohol. That's the fruit that I'm struggling with, but that's not the root. And I believe God to be a repositioner. I've been believing my own understanding and trying to do this in my own power, but I'm here to get my deliverance and my freedom. Child of God, that only could happen because I had to give up my own understanding and humble myself and do something. It was just me and God. Nobody would help me. Sometime you're going to have to do things on your own. Hallelujah. And I remember the third visit, people of God. The third visit. I don't tell a lot of people this many times. God say, don't tell people because I don't want them to think that's how I'll do it for them. But this morning, God said, tell the people on the third visit, this brother walked in. It's Asian brother. Because truth be told, I was the only black person in this space. This place that God sent me to, it wasn't a many black people at all. This wasn't a space. I, I can tell you the truth. I battled to go in there because as I watched the people go in and out, I said, this ain't people where black people go. But on that third visit, people of God, in my reposition, repositioning, the brother walks in. He says he's new and he says, I was a part of the open group. And he says, my name is such and such. I am a believer in Christ and my struggle is abandonment. People of God. I looked around that room. I said, wait a minute. He struggled with this addiction and he struggles with this addiction and he struggles with this addiction. What the, what the heck is he talking about? Abandonment. And the spirit of God grabbed me. And I felt freedom happening. I was being released to that moment. I couldn't even hear the messages from the brothers no more for the rest 45 minutes. My God, today. I got to my car. And I wept. As I Googled abandonment, I seen my whole life. God said, Mom was... Uh, diagnosed to die plenty of times when you was just a little boy you thought she would be leaving you any day she was the only thing you had your daddy wasn't there you done been to 10 20 funerals because your own struggle with women they leave you or you leave them and it leaves you with a hole in your heart of course you struggle with abandonment my child It was a repositioning, and I was being repositioned in my between time for freedom. And I want you to be encouraged, child of God. I lean not on your own understanding, Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. I feel it in my spirit. There's somebody right now. God hasn't showed up in the time that you wanted him to show up. And you have started to lean on your own understanding. But I pray to God today that you surrender it back to God so he can reposition you for your promise. My God, thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, you're so good. I wasn't called to be before you long today. God told me to get in and get out. So I'm going to come to a close. And in my closing, I want to jump to verse 7. 
we see the psalmist. The psalmist says, turn us again to yourself. Oh God, heavens of heaven's armies, make your face shine down upon us. Only then will we be saved. As you saw in my story, God is positioning us to turn us back to him. God is saying, if you would allow me to give you my understanding, child of God, surrender your own understanding and reposition yourself back in the understanding that I have for you, I will set you free. Child of God, there's encouragement here. There's good news. Because let me remind you of something. The, psalm, the psalmist didn't have the Savior. Hallelujah. The psalmist, didn't, the psalmist didn't have the Savior. We have a Savior that has come into the world and we know that the promise is Jesus Christ shall return. The rock has never failed. Even in our in-between time. So I want you to be bold as the scripture says, turn us back to you, God. Pay attention that it doesn't say turn back to us, God. The promise of God and the position of God doesn't change for the child of God. The child of God changes with God. And I ask you, is it a, a season for you to turn back to the things that God has promised you? Here's the challenge, though. I'll admit, as we go through the problems of this pandemic and this tough season of 2020, uh, uh, so many of us ha had saw glimpses of our promises. Whether you had the career or you had the relationship or your finances was getting right or your health was getting together and God has given you a glimpse of the promise, but then 2020 came and everything changed. And so now you're, you, you, you're like me sometimes. God, why you even show me a glimpse? I would have preferred you not even show me. And so in my own understanding now, I've kind of given up. I don't even believe that it's for me anymore, God. I was telling people that this was what I was going to do. And I was showing them the fruits of my work. And now and I'm in shame because I don't have none of that. I'm not positioned there. I don't have the job. The child is messing up again. But I want to encourage you to elbow somebody and make some room and say, I believe that God is turning it around for me. I'm talking about look at your husband, look at your children, put it in the chat. Say, God is turning it around for me because I know my Savior lives and the rock has never failed. I know that God is turning it around for me. The beautiful part about verse 7 is he says, shine your light. And Pastor Tanisha said it clearly. We don't even have to ask for God to shine his light because he brought his light into the world already. We can stand in the now and say we know the light is already. The Savior has come and we are anticipating the return but in the meantime and in the between time, we can say the light shines on me. God, help me back to the path where the light shines. God is turning it around for me. He says, God, then we will be saved. And that's good news, too, because we don't have to think about then we will be saved. We have an opportunity to be saved right now. Our Savior came so that we can be saved. The psalmist had to ask to be saved, but we have an open door to the Savior. Be encouraged, child of God. As we are positioning towards the promise or repositioning, know that you serve the same God, the rock. Here's the beautiful part about my story. I remember when I hit rock bottom, I thank God that I found out he was the rock at the bottom. I'm here. Anybody going through anything, God, is an invitation. God is saying, I'm right here. The rock has never failed. Even when we failed all the way at rock bottom, thank God that God is the rock at the bottom. There is an invitation for you to reposition and claim it and say, God is turning it around. I don't know if it's health issues. 
but I dare you claim God is turning it around for me. I don't know if it's financial issues, but I dare you to say God is turning it around for me. I don't know if your relationship issues, but I dare you to say God is turning it around for me. For many of us, our spiritual connection just has deceased, but I dare you to say God is turning it around for me. God just sits and waits, staying right there in the promise. God has never failed us, never left us, never forsake us. God is saying, child of God, I am the promise and I am never failing you. I'm here. This is a season. And as we travel through this season of Advent, let us be in a place of remembering that we serve the God of the already, the God of the now, hallelujah, and the God of the not yet. There's power in understanding all of God. There's power in understanding when we have leaned on our own understanding. We put ourselves in position for the adversary to have a field day. But you got to be able to say, God, take me back and let me surrender my own understanding so that your will can be done. That's where a lot of us are. We, we, God, God, God is saying, if you would have persistent prayer and praise, then I will give, give you persistent power and patience. And that sounds simple, but that's what we need in this season is some power and patience because when we lean on our own understanding, the power is left because God is no longer in position in our hearts and in our minds and the patience is what we need as we go through these things so once again child of god god is saying if you would allow me to endow you with persistent prayer and praise then i would give you persistent power and patience and the reason i will give you the persistent power and patience is so that you can persevere through the process towards the promise hallelujah God said, I will give you the persistent power and patience so that you can persevere through the process towards the promise. I'll end by saying this. In this season, it's going to take some uncommon faith. It's going to take some uncommon prayer. It's going to take some uncommon praise. But this is what I love about the psalm. It says, I've read all of his psalms. He never quit. <laughs> he failed and he get back up and he failed and he get back up and he doubt God and he come back and he doubt God and he come back and he say, God, uh, uh, they have they have taken your land and I can imagine God saying they ain't did nothing yet. That's just you leaning on your own understanding. But the psalmist gives us encouragement in all of his struggles and troubles. He never, ever believed that the rock had failed. This walk ain't just about staying in position. It's about coming back to the position. So child of God, I pray that you be encouraged by a psalmist who teaches us very clearly that as we travel through this season of the in-between time, recognize that God is the God of already, the God of now, and the God of not yet. And as we navigate through that, be aware of the battles of the minds. Be aware of when we are leaning on our own understanding, which leaves us in a position for the adversary to have his way. And when you recognize it, be willing to say, God, have me again. Turn me, God. And then receive the light of God so that your path may be lightened and you can be re repositioned towards the promise. God is good. God is faithful. I don't just say this because this is the scripture. I say this because I live it. And so do you. God loves you, child of God. I dare you to love him back.